My name is Mary, Mary of Magdala. I was told I could find Jesus of Nazareth here. I know nobody by that name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I bothered you this late. This man you're searching for? Yes. Is he a friend of yours? A friend? Yes. Yes, he is. prophesied that I will be recorded among the criminals. That is about to happen. You will be hated and persecuted because of me. You will be put to the test. Pray that you will be strong. Now I must be alone. May we watch with you? Watch. And pray. wants them to take him. Father, the hour has come. I've glorified you on earth. I've finished the work you gave for me to do. I've made your name known to the men whom you gave me out of this world. Now they know that all your gifts have come to me from you. And they now speak your word. And now I'm coming to you. But while I'm still in this world, I ask that you protect by the power of your name all those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. For as you have sent me, so also have I sent them. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they, too, may be consecrated by the truth. And it is not for these alone, I pray, but for all those who have faith in me. May they all be as one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. So also may they be in us that the world may believe that you did send me. Father, the hour has come. Glorify me as I have glorified you. Peter. Peter, aren't you able to keep awake with me, even for one hour? I know. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. as I will, but as you will. Which one of these men is Jesus of Nazareth? Which one? I am Jesus. Well, what are you waiting for? Take him. Yeah. Ah! 
Peter, put down your sword. You have me. Let the others go. Let them go. Where do you want him taken? My father's house. Haven't I taught you that those who live by the sword shall perish by the sword? Don't you know that I could pray to my father and legions of angels would defend me? Move. Couldn't have. I've never heard him preach. My father in law has a great curiosity about this man. I would like to see him before we begin. As you say. Was there any resistance? One of them used a sword. Jesus stopped him. Good. He said, those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. And you were impressed? Yes, I was. If only it were true. Those who live by the sword kill those without swords and live on. Before my son-in-law was appointed by Pontius Pilate, I served for many years as high priest. I have wondered and still wonder what makes a young man like you pose as the savior of the whole world. Are you deranged? We have been told that you are highly intelligent, well-versed in the law, not given to extravagance or indulgence in the grape. We understand that you are unmarried, and we haven't a single report of any scandal about you. We do know that you associate with prostitutes, but you've never been known to take, well, a personal human interest in any of them. Is that true? The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Ah, so you can speak after all. But what does that mean, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first? It means that prostitutes will go into heaven before you. I can see that you are not given to flattery or diplomacy. Indeed, it is your mouth that has fetched you here tonight. Tell me, Jesus of Nazareth. Why do you teach heresy? I have spoken openly, where all the world could listen. I have spoken in the synagogue meetings, and in the temple, and in the open country. Why do you question me? Question those who heard what I said. They know what I said. If I was wrong in speaking this way, then prove me wrong. If I was right, why do you strike me? No, let him be. You, 
You're one of them. No, I'm not. You're mistaken. The rabbi's expecting you, gentlemen. This man was with him. Even his clothes are Galilean. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't... <laughs> Know the man. <laughs> Untie him. He's not a common thief, is he? Jesus of Nazareth, the question of blasphemy has been raised in connection with your preaching. Have you anything to say? Nothing at all? Very well. Let us proceed. Honorable men of the Sanhedrin, here is a man who is supposedly against violence, a man who teaches brotherly love. And as such, he comes to Jerusalem. And what is one of the first things he does? This man of love. He goes to the temple, this man of peace, this man of non-violence, and he overturns the tables of the money changers and the benches and cages of the dove sellers. He fashions a whip out of cord and he lashes them out of the court of the temple. The merchants, the sheep, the lambs, the cattle. And throughout it all, he is shouting insanely. Would you tell this august body exactly what it was you were screaming? If you are able to remember, that is. You have turned my father's house into a marketplace. His father's house. Can you imagine that? He calls our holy temple his father's house. This carpenter from Galilee was known to associate with prostitutes and collectors of Roman taxes and all manner of other disreputable people calls our holy temple his father's house. But that really isn't as surprising as it might sound on first hearing. Considering the fact that he also claims to have the power to forgive sins, thereby bestowing upon himself a power our faith reserves to God alone. But neither is that altogether surprising, since he also claims to heal the sick, raise the dead, give sight to the blind, feed thousands upon a few loaves and fishes, and walk on water. <laughs> but why not? Since he refers to himself as the son of God. The son of God. What is the meaning of this? I ask. What is the meaning of this? Welcome, Nicodemus. I'm happy you could join us. Happy I could join you. Is that the reason I was not informed of these proceedings? Please be seated. Let us continue. I demand to know why I was not informed. There was no time to notify everyone. No time? Will you please sit down? Is my friend Joseph of Arimathea present? Or Solomon? Mordecai? Jonathan? Elam? Micah? Azariah? There was no time to inform anyone who might disagree with you. There are many men of the Sanhedrin who are not here. Will you sit down? We have important business to take care of. Yes. You are doing now what you have wanted to do for a very long time. 
How many times have you sent men to trap him? And how many times have they returned, as I did, impressed with his knowledge of the law, his philosophy, his hatred of hypocrisy, and his love of the truth? I ask you, how many times? Sit down, Nicodemus. Sit down. I tell you, this man is innocent. Sit, sit down, down, Nicodemus. Sit down. Sit sit down. down. He is innocent. As much as I would like to leave out of shame, I will not leave. I will remain here on behalf of the many of our membership who will ask, how could this happen? Shall we hear the evidence? I saw him eating with sinners, with tax collectors and whores. I became very angry. Did you speak to him about it? Yes. I questioned him as to why he did so. He said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. He said he had not come to heal the virtuous, but sinners. He said it is not what goes into the mouth that makes a man unclean. It is what comes out of the mouth that makes him unclean. He did. And? He said that things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And from the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, theft, perjury and slander. And that these are the things that make a man unclean. But to eat with unwashed hands does not make a man unclean. And he said that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And he said that he himself is master of the Sabbath. I was there when a woman with a bad name in her town came to him. She had been a prostitute for many years. I heard him tell her that her sins were forgiven. Tell us, please. Do you know this man, now standing here, charged with blasphemy? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not well, but, but I know him. You don't know him well, but tell us, what do you know of him? I was in the synagogue on the Sabbath when Jesus of Nazareth came to teach. Would you tell us, please, what he taught in your synagogue on that Sabbath day? I don't remember all he taught. No, what I remember is the mustard seed. The what? The, the mustard seed. He, he came to your synagogue to teach about mustard seeds? He said that that's what the kingdom of God is like. He said the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed? Yes. Yes, that's it, that's it. He said the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Everybody knows the mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. Hey, once it's sown in the earth, and grows and grows into the biggest shrub before it becomes a tree and, and, and puts out such big branches. This, the birds of the air can build nests in it. Jesus of Nazareth made an impression, I can tell you, <laughs> not just on me, on everybody that was there. In what way did he make an impression, apart, that is, from the, the story of the mustard seed? Well, you see, he wasn't like the preachers that we are used to, you know. He taught with authority. He taught as if it was coming from him, I mean, not as if it was just being recited out of some old scroll. Or... But we understand that you had some more particular reason to be grateful to this man. Would you tell us about that, please? My soul was possessed at the time, possessed of an unclean spirit, and Jesus, cleansed me. What do you mean? Well, I mean that the unclean spirit that was in me shouted 
at Jesus. He threw my mouth, he shouted and, and, and said to him, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? You mean you said it? No, no, no. The unclean spirit said it. But then, then Jesus said, Be quiet! Come out of him! And then, I, I don't know what happened, you know, but they told me that I fell down and, and went into convulsions and the unclean spirit gave a loud cry and, and, and left me. What you have just described is sorcery. Say what you like. He did more for me than anyone else has ever done. He cleansed me. <laughs> Love him. Oh. <laughs> you mean he worked magic on you? Start again. A one, two, three. Here. Take it. The law. The law states that no bargain is complete until each party has possession of the merchandise. And I heard him say. I have the power to destroy the temple of God and in three days build it up. Are you certain you heard him say that? Yes. Did you alone hear it or were there others in your presence? Many others heard him. Do you deny that? Yeshua Bar Yosef, I ask you directly, are you the anointed one? the Son of God. The words are your own. I adjure you. By the living God, tell us outright. Are you the Messiah, the Son of God? I am. Yes. My Father and I are one. Moreover, I tell you that from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God and coming toward you on the clouds of heaven. The man says he is equal with God. He makes himself equal with the Almighty himself. will be taken to Pontius Pilate to be sentenced. I don't understand. He didn't have to say it. 
Why would he condemn himself? Here, Claudia. I couldn't go back to sleep. I haven't been to bed. How long can it take a crowd of Jews to make a case against this man? I dreamed about him. About who? Jesus. And I hope you dreamt it all went smoothly. I dreamed he was a god come to earth. Did you? Really? Dream that. Pilot. When they bring him here, let him go. Let him go? He's an innocent man. What's wrong with you? Have nothing to do with him. You, you'll regret it otherwise. I'll regret it all right. No, Claudia, I'm sick and tired of your dreams and superstitions. I understand it when it comes from one of the servants, but you're the educated daughter of a senator. Maybe they are all dreams and portents, but I believe in our gods and you believe in nothing. I believe in the might and power of Rome. That's what I believe in. You believe in nothing. Are they coming? No, I'm alone. Is his mother here? Yes. She came yesterday from Nazareth. John! I haven't seen you for so long. How is my son? Is he well? What is it? What's wrong? Mary, they took him last night. They arrested him. But it's Passover. Who could have done that? It was Caiaphas and the temple guards. The high priest? And the Romans, too. What will they do to him? I don't know. But at the Seder, he spoke of leaving us. He said that where he was going, we couldn't follow. When they wanted to stone my son in Nazareth, in his own village, I had a premonition. The Romans don't stone people. Romans crucify! It's not certain. For the Passover act of mercy, Pilate will release one Jewish prisoner. It will not be my son who is pardoned. When he was a baby, Joseph and I brought him to the temple in Jerusalem to make the offering. A pair of turtle doves for our firstborn son. There was a holy man called Simeon in the temple. He blessed us. And he said to me, Your son is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign which men reject. And you, too, shall be pierced to the heart. John. 
upon. They are going to crucify my son. 